Welcome back to BNG Hockey, where it's always black and gold. The Boston Bruins are 10-1, and, and things are looking pretty good for the organization. Fans are ecstatic, the team is on a roll, and then they deflate all of that with the controversial signing of prospect Mitchell Miller. Let's talk about it. The team signs defenseman Mitchell Miller to a three-year entry-level contract. Now, before we get into the hockey side of things, which I do want to talk about because I'm a hockey channel, and I do think it's important to talk about because it's the sole reason the Bruins were willing to take on this player is because of his on-ice performance. So we are going to get to that, but obviously in a case like this, we have to start with the background. Mitchell Miller was once a top 50 prospect going into the 2020 draft. He fell all the way down to the fourth round where he was eventually picked by the Arizona Coyotes. Now, the reason he fell was he was involved in some very serious bullying cases and there are plenty of good articles out there that break down this story a little bit more I didn't want to take anyone's story or steal any of that information so be sure and go and look online at some of those stories if you're interested I want to make sure I get all the information right so I would much rather that you all go look that up on your own time but just so you know, it's some pretty serious stuff. And it's very confusing for Bruins fans why they would ever think about bringing this type of human into the organization, never mind the hockey player side of things. And that's why I do want to talk about the hockey side of things, because I think that will help fans better understand whether it's right or wrong, why the Bruins made this decision to bring in this player. I should mention how we got to the point where the Bruins were able to sign him. After the Coyotes drafted him, they ended up renouncing the pick entirely, which means that Miller became a free agent, and that's how the Bruins were able to sign him from the USHL. Now, last season in the USHL, in 60 games, he had 39 goals, 44 assists for a total of 83 points, and was a plus 43. He's a 20-year-old, 5'10", right-shot defenseman. He set records for both goals and points in USHL history. He won Player and Defenseman of the Year. So obviously the on-ice performance is phenomenal. But at some point you have to ask yourself, is it worth it to bring in the hockey player if you also get the human that comes along with that? And in this case scenario, it doesn't seem like that's the case, even though the Bruins clearly decided that the hockey player was definitely worth the risk. And after thinking about it and listening to Don Sweeney's comments, there's a few reasons why I think they ended up coming to the decision to bring this player in. The first reason why is that they're just doing their due diligence, and it seemed like Don Sweeney continued to bring up the point that they weren't the only NHL team in interested in this player. And unfortunately, in the world of sports, this happens from time to time. I was mentioning before to one of my friends that if this was just a fourth line left wing bum, he never would get a shot in the NHL because the talent wasn't there to go along with all of the controversy. But because this player is so elite at his position, it's worth it to these NHL teams to take that on, as wrong as that is. It's very common, and Don was almost using that as a bit of an excuse, like it made it okay that they were the ones to give him this chance. And speaking of chances, there is that narrative going around that everybody deserves a second chance. Now, I don't know if that's the case with this particular player, but the Bruins certainly seem to think it is, that they're willing to give him another chance. They think that he's changed. They think that they can change him and help him. And I'm not so sure that Don Sweeney loves this move, because it did seem like he was pretty sad and agreeing with people when it was kind of confusing and just his overall tone during this press conference was off. I don't know if this was a Cam Neely decision or all the way up to ownership. Clearly a bunch of people in the organization agreed that this was a good move or it never would have happened. And if Bruins fans are looking for them to change this move, I don't think that's going to happen either. I think they're pretty set in keeping this player and working with him and having him as part of the system because that's the biggest reason why the Bruins brought in this player and something that's pretty sad and goes back to Don Sweeney's draft history to talk about. As good as the Bruins are playing right now, the future continues to not look so bright for them. They continue to have one of the worst prospect pools in all of hockey, and that's due to Don Sweeney's poor drafting. So the fact that they don't have a lot of high-end prospects is the reason why you have to take on a guy like Mitchell Miller, who's only available because of how awful he is as a human being, and you have to make him one of your top prospects. Now, there's no denying that he's a very skilled offensive defenseman. He was actually a forward who was transitioning to defense, and the Bruins think they can help him with that as well so clearly they see him as some sort of project and as a high level prospect which is something they don't have a lot of especially at the defensive position so from a hockey standpoint it makes sense why they brought this player in 
But as I mentioned before, at some point you have to look at the man himself and think, is that worth it to get the hockey player too? The Bruins said yes. I'm not so sure that was the right move by them. This is also tough for Bruins fans. As you all know, I'm an insanely big Bruins fan and I trust the organization and I love the organization and all of its players, but it's going to be really hard to root for this guy. And I want to mention this to Bruins fans because I think there's just too many out there that are really hoping that this move gets flipped. It could could happen later on down the road if he plays well or even if he doesn't play well maybe they can somehow find a trade partner or find a way to get out of this contract but the contract is already signed and this is a player who's going to play with the Providence Bruins and likely play some pretty good hockey and could be looking at next season as a target date when it comes to getting into NHL games so I just don't want Bruins fans to be surprised if he ends up playing out this entire contract because I really think the Bruins are in this for the long haul but as I said before it's going to be hard to root for this player and hard to root for my team and believe in my team when they're making choices like this. And I hate that they made this kind of move when the Bruins have been such a great story all year long. They've been red hot. They've been great to watch. The players are so lovable. You were really excited about the franchise. And then they bring this kind of story to the team, which was something they really didn't need. I don't care how good of a prospect he is. It was a bad time to do it. And you should just draft better and find better players and make better trades if you want to boost your prospect pool. You should shouldn't have to go digging to the bottom of the pile for this kid just to get some scrape of talent. And he might not ever play an NHL game. Who knows if he can translate those same stats to a higher level of hockey. So all in all, don't love this move by the Bruins. It was poor timing, a poor choice, and really strange because it seems very against the Bruins' values to make this kind of move. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. What do you think of this signing? If you're looking forward to more content from me, make sure to give it a big like. And if you haven't already, subscribe.